Please take your seats quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome to OneMinuteTennis.com. In today's session, I want to talk to you about the single biggest reason why most players do not hit the ball as hard as they should do on the forehand, on the backhand, and on the serve. And this is because they've put the brakes on. They're decelerating through the stroke and through contact with the ball. I want to show you how to feel whether you've got the brakes on in your strokes and how to remove the brakes, remove the shackles, and hit harder and freer and faster today. Now, all over the world, there are players who are fine-tuning their technique and getting almost perfect form on the strokes and yet still not hitting the ball as hard as they want to and as hard as they see some other players hitting. This could be your story. The biggest reason for this is that the break is on in the stroke and the break, the part that slows the contact down, the part that slows the ball down is the wrist here. You see, if my wrist is locked through contact, it can be free before, it can be free afterwards, but if my wrist is locked through the contact zone here, I don't mean just on contact with the ball, but I mean through this area here, then an awful lot of the energy that you're putting into the stroke will be absorbed and nullified by this tight, solid wrist. So we need to take the break off. The wrist is usually the break in the strokes of most players around the world. But how to do this, how to get the feeling of it? Now, traditional coaching is to suggest that we have a loose grip. But that's not going to do it. You see, I can have a very loose grip here, but I'll still have a tight wrist. It's easy for me to do. In fact, it's almost natural. So what I'm going to do now is show you the difference between a loose grip and a loose wrist. And then I'm going to show you how you can achieve a loose wrist through contact with the ball and take the brakes off your strokes forever. So if I take the racket here and just move it from side to side gently, I've got a super loose grip. Right, I can move the racket within my hand here and I gently move the racket from side to side. And this is okay for hitting the ball, but it's nowhere near the maximum efficiency because the hand and the racket are moving together. So now I'm going to do something a little bit strange. I'm going to remove both the forefinger and the thumb from the grip. I remove the forefinger and the thumb and now the direction that the hand goes is the opposite to the direction that the racket goes. With a loose grip and with a loose wrist. With a loose grip and with a loose wrist. Now immediately, when I remove the finger and thumb and the racket becomes live and is moving in a different direction to the arm, then when I make a stroke this way, I'll increase the power dramatically and it will be easier. It will flow better. Now, what will happen is when you hit the ball, for sure, around contact, your hand will tighten and squeeze. But the momentum that you will have achieved in the stroke means that's largely irrelevant and the racket will still fly through contact, giving you almost a super powered stroke. Quite simply, this means that you have an extra lever in the stroke. You see, I have the lever of my body, the lever of my arm, and if I have a loose grip but a tight wrist, the lever of my hand and racket moving as one together. But if I have a loose wrist, whether the grip is tight or whether it's loose is irrelevant, then what happens is I have the lever of my body, the lever of my arm, the lever of my hand, and the lever of my racket. And so I have an extra lever and this will create tremendous power and force through the stroke. Why is it so significant, the extra lever? Because the extra lever is on the outside. You see, if I just spin the racket here in my hand, then if you were in the middle, say it was a roundabout, if you were in the middle of this roundabout, then you'd be watching the world go round. But if you were on the edge of the roundabout, then you'd be hanging on for dear life. And the extra lever we're creating is on the outside of the swing. So the leverage, momentum, speed and power is a significant increase. And this is easy to do. First of all, you simply have to find that feeling here of the live arm by moving this forefinger and thumb, and then just get into the habit of practicing gently at first, of taking the racket back, releasing the finger and thumb, releasing the finger and thumb, ideally on the take back here, and then swing through and think about nothing. Don't change anything. It doesn't matter if the hand tightens, you'll still get this extra power. 
you'll have taken the brakes off your stroke and you'll feel the kind of free, easy flowing power that most players are looking for but never actually achieve. If you like my ideas, have a look at our books on Amazon. We've got an unusual combination of detailed scientific analysis of the strokes, the physics, the anatomy, the biomechanics, and then really easy solutions such as this with clear illustrations, making it as easy as possible for you to take your game to the next level. And if you're serious about change, then have a look at what we're doing with online coaching. There's information in the website below, or you can email me for details. What we do is we provide detailed video analysis, and then one-to-one -one conversations discussing how to take your game to the next level, and then one-to-one -one on court lessons, helping you make those changes that will take your game to its real potential. So take the brakes off your game, find the live arm. A loose grip won't do it, but a loose wrist will make a huge difference to the power in your game. And to achieve this, simply freeing the finger and the thumb makes a tremendous difference to the speed and power of your stroke. Thanks for watching and see you next time for more unique tennis lessons that really work.